He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. All right. Good morning, church family. Good morning. All right. So thank you, everybody, for, for gathering here today. You know, today we're going to be going into Psalm 1 and 2. And the awesome thing about this is, you know, Psalm 1 talks about the, the way of the righteous and the wicked. You know, we as people, we look at the way of the righteous and we stop and we look to see how people are living and, and and people that look like they got it all together they're all dressed up they're all pretty and everything well guess what just because somebody looks like they have it all together don't mean they are don't mean they're made righteous don't mean they're living right according to god and because somebody's life don't look right you know it could be somebody struggling having the hardest time in the world in the way they live maybe maybe fighting every day their addiction and everything and you know what they could be counted as righteous because it's not what you do but it's what Christ did for you and it's how your heart is and it depends on the fact that you're only made righteous through Christ Jesus Jesus died on the cross for our sins he rose again in three days and if you believe that you're going to heaven it's not about living perfect a lot of us as Christians we want to live right to show our love for God anyway Psalm chapter 1 verse 1 blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. Now, I love that, because what does it mean when it says his delight is in the law of the Lord? His delight is in the word of God. He wants to have a relationship with God. He gets to know God. He's the, he, he's dwelling on what the Word says day and night. And the Word tells us about Jesus all through the Bible. It tells us about His love. It tells us about His coming again. And so if we are trusting in God, we are building a relationship with God. If we're meditating on it, we need to be turning to Him in prayer. He hears you. All right, so, so verse 3. He's like a tree planted by a stream of water. That yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like shaft in the wind drives away. You know, as I walked out my door today, actually, it's so windy outside that I could see all the stuff from the ground picking up and just blowing and going every which direction. I walked back in the house and I grabbed my sunglasses because you don't want that stuff blowing in your eyes. It's just wildly blowing. It says the wicked are like that. They're blowing together and following their own path, going in their own direction, and they got no end point. And we need to be standing and living for that end point, that end point looking forward to eternity when this life is over, that we're going to stand with Christ for eternity. We don't want to be just scattered along and lost along the path like the wicked. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the wicked will perish. Now, what does that mean? That don't mean that the wicked is not going to be judged. When you get into the Bible, you stop to see that there's two kind of judgments. There's one where there's the judgment of the righteous, which is known as the Bema judgment. And people are going to be judged on what they did to, to the abilities God had given them to share God's love with others. For some people, it might just be holding the door open and saying, Jesus loves you, or encouraging people in some way. For some, it might be giving something. For some, it might be preaching and teaching. And, and it, God will give you all a different gift. Don't feel inadequate. And he's not going to judge you and compare you who maybe can only pray for people who... You know what, that's a warrior, by the way, who could only pray for people to to somebody who maybe speaks to billions of people like Billy Graham, right? No, God's going to look at what you did with the ability he gave you. And if you're living for God and not living for yourself, 
And you know what? If you fall short, that's okay too. Because Jesus loves you. He paid your way. We all sin. We all fall short of God's glory. But we're made right through Christ Jesus. Now the wicked, the judgment they're looking at is called the great white throne judgment. And you know, the Bible, as I said a second ago, says the wages of sin is death. John 3.36 says, if you believe in the Son, that's Jesus Christ, you shall have everlasting life. But if you believe not, God's wrath remains upon you. What is God's wrath? <laughs> if you haven't accepted the gift that Christ paid for your sins, then you're paying for your sins when you die. And it's a wage we can't pay. And that the wages of that sin is death. It's, it's hell. It's separation from God for eternity. And it's not a place that God intends for you to go. God wants you to go to heaven. And that's why Jesus died on the cross for your sins. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world. How much did he love you? So much that he gave his only begotten Son, who willingly came for you, that whosoever believes in him, and that includes you, should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The, the 3.17 says, For God did not send his Son into the world yeah, to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. I, I always want to focus on that. It says might, not will, because you got a choice to make. Do you accept what Jesus did for your sins? Are you taking that gift? It's like if I was to hold out a $100 bill and say, look, it's yours. You just got to come get it. If you never come and get it, you're ne it's never going to be yours. That's how this gift works. God paid your way. You need to accept it. Now, Romans 10, 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. It's that easy. You just got a choice to make. Um, with that being said, I know I was going to go into Psalm 2. I'm not going to. But with that being said, I recommend you start a relationship with Christ Jesus. It makes an eternity a difference. And if you want to pray, I don't know who you are or where you are, but let's pray. Father God, Lord, I, I know that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. That he rose again in three days. Father God, forgive me for my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me to live for you from this day forward. My life is yours. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that and you truly believe it, you're going to heaven. Just trust in Jesus. Have a great day. Be blessed.